he's looking for food. Looks like the girl's a princess. Holding a stick with someone's head on it. Joe Hooks is on a mission to bring famous paintings into schools. Today, she's at St John the Baptist Primary School in Bromley. She believes learning how to appreciate art contributes to the whole curriculum. Art is hugely important for children. By looking at paintings, they can build up their visual confidence. Often it gives children who maybe not be academically particularly bright a chance to really shine. And I think that confidence in one subject can go across into other subjects. The school also sees the benefit of Joe's inspiring slideshows. It's like bringing a mini art gallery into the classroom and the sessions really encourage the children to look closely at paintings and to think about why they've been done in a particular way. It also increases their vocabulary, their art vocabulary, as well as enriching their current topic that they're doing in class. It really enriches their curriculum. This afternoon, what we're going to do is we're going to look at famous paintings. But they're Jo's first job is to win over her audience. She believes that to get the attention of the whole class, we need to captivate the boys first. Today, I showed two paintings which both showed a severed head. Those sorts of paintings appeal to boys particularly because they quite like the sort of gory elements of certain paintings. And if you can capture the boys in a class, then I think that's an extremely good thing. If you can get them from the beginning, get them interested, and a severed head often does that. You need to look around, try and work out who the main characters might be. Joe's theme for Year 5 is storytelling and getting them to delve deeper into the story behind the triumph of David. OK, and we're going to try and explore how the artists have made things seem exciting, as if it's a really rip-roaring story. Because remember, in a painting, you just get one chance. You just have a canvas on which to show one scene from a story. Does anybody have a clue of what this painting might be about? We know it's about a boy with a huge, huge head on a stick. Some, someone sent him to go out somewhere and kill someone and then he's bring it back to them. They did. Does anybody know what this boy might be called? Well, this is a story from the Bible and it's the story of David and Goliath. For getting the children to look at the paintings, these paintings belong to everybody and it's important that, you, that, that you know, the younger generation appreciate them and can learn how to look at them and go and see them in galleries and museums because they are theirs, they need to, they, they need to go and look. Part of Joe's method is to take the children's thoughts outside the painting itself. Would you paint this scene? Would you paint the scene that's the celebration afterwards? I would paint when, when, he, when he was um, cutting off his neck. I'm with you. I'm definitely with you. I would do the bit where the where it's going and to get the blood spurting. Yep. I would do the bit when um, the stones hit him. When the stones hit him. Can anybody tell me what animal they can see here? What can you see here? Yes. A tiger. A tiger. Fantastic. Joe uses other, not quite so gory techniques to capture the imagination of year two. And a tiger is an exciting opener for her animals theme, but not to be taken at face value. Have a look at his face. What do you think he's doing in the jungle? It looks like he's looking for food. Does anybody think differently? Does anybody think that the tiger is doing or feeling something else? What's the weather like in the jungle? What's the weather like? Yes. It's raining. It's raining. Excellent. Yeah, I think he looks scared of the lightning and he's afraid. You can see that he's running from the rain because cats don't like rain. Cats don't like rain. Excellent. Joe leads them into the jungle atmosphere to suggest a different way to experience the painting. Hold on a minute, guys. Let's try and think of the sounds that we can hear in this painting. OK. Could somebody give me a sound for this painting? 
What sound is that? It's the sound of the thunder. The tiger running through the grass. Can you make the noise, though, with your mouth? Pitter, 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 pitter. Pitter, 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 pitter. Brilliant. OK, so will you start off now, please, with the rustling? All of you go. Russell, can you do some clapping? And some rain. Come on. And again. And one more. So this is a very simple painting. It's not a story from the Bible or a Greek myth. It's just a scene of three boys. And they are Paintings don't always need to have an obvious narrative. Some clues to the story of Negro Boy and Two Street Urchins are in the body language. Can anybody tell me what they can see and what gestures make them think of something? That could they're like stand, sitting in a dark place. They might be poor and hiding from someone. Um, that little boy in the corner, he looks like Oliver Twist. That's a brilliant thing to say. Well done. Maybe he's saying give me something. How do you know he might be saying that? Is there anything that he's doing, that boy? What's he doing with his hand? Can you show me? He's doing that. Right. That's the gesture. The hand up. Give me. Can I um, have three volunteers, actually, up here? Oh, my goodness, lots of volunteers. Um... The children invent dialogue for the characters. This one. And I think these two are probably friends, aren't they? While they're talking, can you, could you do some dialogue for us? Um, I'm going to say, um, can, can, can I have my pie back? Yeah, can I have my pie back? Please. Oh, I think he's a bit crosser than that, isn't he? He can say, give me my pie back. Give me my pie back. Go on. Give me my pie back. The two people on the floor are distracting him so the little boy can get the money out of his They pocket. can get the money, yeah. I think that the boy that's standing up is saying, I've got some money in my pocket so I could swap it for the pie. Some of the pie, he could be, yeah. With these sessions, you can have them at the beginning, at the start of a topic, to kind of kick the topic off, or have it halfway through, or have it towards the end. Often I've put them up towards the end, so we've had our external trip out. And then it's just a, it's just a really nice way of um, sort of lifting the topic again towards the end of term. Can anybody tell me what they think's going on here? It looks like something's happened to their home and they've had to be shipped away. They're moving away on a ship. Brilliant. Um, when she's holding her hand under her coat, it looks like there's another hand, like she has a baby. <gasps> a baby, yeah. So you've got these two people and you've spotted that they're on a boat. I want somebody to imagine for me that they are this man. Pretend that you're writing your diary. Could somebody read me the first couple of lines of their diary. I'm very angry, but I still have to speak to my wife and take care of her, even though my house has got destroyed and we all have to move to Australia. I wish I was back in England, even though my house was to um, tear down. Excellent. What I want you to do when you next see a painting is to see if you can discover the story in it. that this horse isn't flying. Back with Year 2, Joe helps them with details that they might otherwise overlook in Stubbs's whistle jacket. Around the outside of this horse, there's just that same colour. You need to look really, really carefully here. There's a shadow. There's a shadow. Excellent. The shadow tells us, doesn't it, that this area must be the floor. How do we know that he's not a wild horse? How do we know that he's kept in a stable? Because really faintly you can see some white on there and it might be horseshoes. It's got white on, so it must be a horseshoe. Excellent. Do you want to come out and paint that on for me? Can you see what she's saying? 
this little bit here and here is where the light is catching the metal. That's how Stubbs has shown us that these <coughs> are shoes and that this isn't a wild horse. Well done. Thank you very much. That's brilliant. Finally back with year five, it's the return of the severed head and another ingenious way to get inside the picture. Is I want to pretend that one of you is a guest at this wedding, because this is a wedding that's gone wrong, hasn't it? Suddenly you're having a wedding and all these men turn up with daggers and swords and suddenly some of them are turning to stone. And I want to interview you because I'm actually going to be Jocasta Hooks from Ancient Greek TV. So does anybody think that they could imagine themselves into being a wedding guest? I think, do you want to have a go? This is Jocasta Hooks reporting for Ancient Greek TV and I'm at the scene of uh, Perseus's wedding, but it's not been any old wedding. Here, I've got one of the wedding guests who's going to describe us the, the events as they unfold this afternoon. Hello, could you tell us what happened? Lots of people from different places just came and um, destroyed our wedding. That must have been terribly frightening. Were they after anybody in particular? They were after Perseus. OK, well, thank you very, very much indeed. And I've got the man, I've got the groom himself in front of me. Perseus, can you tell us what happened? Well, <clears throat> me, me and my girl, um, me and the girl that I saved was so close to getting married and we came to the stage of when we were for the wedding and then just these some of some big bad men came to um to, like kill me i was i was thinking really hard what to do and decided just popped in my mind i killed um a fierce gorgon and i cut chopped off its head and if i showed it to anyone they'll just turn into stone so i used that so how are you feeling now? Uh, it must be a pretty, a, a, a pretty amazing wedding day for anybody, let alone a hero like yourself. I thought the um, wedding f to be broken, I felt sad, but for, um, for them not killing me, I felt quite happy. Thank you very much indeed. OK, thank you. That's excellent. Well done, guys. Well, I thought the two classes did. The children were absolutely brilliant. They were very, very, they were very magical, had lots to say. And I think that when you see them growing in confidence, and to begin with, they're slightly tentative, and then they can, you know, they, they want to ask more questions, they want to take part in their activities more. And that's because they've grown in confidence by looking at those paintings. And you know, we hope that they will take that into their everyday life and into the other elements they look at art in, in the school. <laughs> Fire back. They are after persons. <laughs>